Hey guys, Nick here. Today, we will be looking at Daryl coming in contact with Woodbury and actually meeting the Woodbury people instead of Andrea and Michonne. But how will that affect the timeline? And what has Sophia been up to all this time with Negan? This is part six to what if Sophia joined Negan. Now, since I didn't really cover her in the last episode, just said she was going off with Negan to save people, now we're going to cover that part just a little bit for clarification. Sophia's been getting in good, in a good neighborhood, in a good place with Negan and the Saviors, becoming very comfortable with them as like a new adoptive family. And Negan? We all knew how comfortable he was with children. So, think of, he would think of Sophia, I believe, as the kid he never had. And it would honestly really bring out a better side of Negan much earlier than when we were actually introduced to him. So, that would be nice. But anyways, we left off two episodes ago with Negan saying that they're going to go and save people after Sophia got used to the sanctuary. And now, we recap that part, where Negan also says that in case these people are hostile, Sophia needs to arm herself with the weapons she chose from before. Now... With Negan's wives being the main thing that Sophia really was bothered by, soon better reassured by Negan, the weapons part, she still gotta get used to. Because keep in mind, Sophia never used a weapon at all, so this is new to her. But the weapon she chose, she felt comfortable with, and soon enough gets a little bit of practice with them, and when Negan says to arm herself, she does. Her machine pistol, one of the weapons that she chose, goes into one of the side or back pockets of her pants. The switchblade that she got, she puts in a sleeve in her shirt. And this is basically her arming herself. T this is a little girl, mind you, arming herself like a friggin' military soldier. Now, for the machete and shotgun pistol-like weapon that she chose. She puts them on both sides of her pants. Both of the... I believe that there would be pouches, not just fit them in the pockets. Unless they were big pockets. Other than that, she would have to have weapon holsters for her pants. Now, for the double-headed spear, which, in a sense... I don't think you would really see in The Walking Dead. It was just a really cool add-on that I feel Sophia could have, or rather should have. For that, she would have it in the back of her shirt. And for story's sake and clarification's sake, I'm going to say that there's a weapon holder, or like a double-headed spear holder for the weapon, sort of like Michonne's blade, so that way it doesn't end up stabbing her in the process. So, with all that, Sophia, like I said, would probably have training with these weapons before actually using them, so that way she's way more comfortable with them. But with all that said, she smiles at Negan and says she's ready to go. And with that, that's the clarification on what Sophia's been up to with Negan. We'll be cutting more to them in future episodes, like I've said before. Back at Woodbury, I feel that it's important that I note something that I kind of forgot to before, it was, since it was near the end of the episode. Axel, Oscar, and Big Tiny, who survived, by the way, all go with Daryl to Woodbury. So they're all with him, because they also wanted to help with Sophia and everything. And Daryl said, why not? And once they reach Woodbury... The prisoners are like, well, maybe Sophia's in there. We should go check it out and everything. But Daryl's not so sure. This could very well just be enemies at a town. They're not... They gotta go back and, like, talk to Rick first before they actually waltz into a town that they're, they're, they don't know about. And begin to turn. But just then, Daryl hears a voice say, 
where are you going, brother? You're going to miss out on all the fun. And Daryl, when he turns around, even the voice alone was enough to send him into shock. Because remember, Daryl had hallucinated Merle twice. So he thought that this was just a hallucination again at first. When he turns around, sure enough, the real Merle is sitting right there at the edge of the gates of Woodbury. Because he was basically, he noticed Daryl at the last second when they were about to go away. And figure, and he was just as surprised to see Daryl himself. Because remember, Andrea and Michonne, they didn't, neither one of them arrived at Woodbury. So the knowledge that Daryl was alive out there was basically lost to Merle. Unlike when Andrea and, you know, Glenn and Maggie told him. But now, Daryl meets Merle first, before anybody else, also prisoners. And then Daryl's let in on what happened with Merle, what happened to him with his little arm thing. And then Daryl says that they're still looking for Sophia, because they lost her at a highway after the whole CDC thing. And Merle says, unfortunately, she ain't here. And with that said, we'll cut straight to the prison real quick. Lori, as well as T-Dog, which I've had survive in several stories now. Never thought I'd have Lori survive more than one story, but I am. Anyways, with no Andrew, the two of them are going to be able to remain alive. Because we also have Dale, we have Herschel who wouldn't have his leg bit off. Much more beneficial help. Also, Shane, who would get to see and be there for his pretty much daughter, Judith. And I've had that happen, and I believe my What If Rick Spurred Shane remake, and maybe one or two stories that I can't remember at the moment. Point is, he's there for the for when she's born. Now, Rick is getting concerned, because Daryl and the prisoners haven't come back for a substantial amount of time, and he gets that the search for Sophia is still very important. But for them to take this long is definitely, definitely concerning. But he can't go out there alone, because especially if they were invaded, it could mean instant danger. And if Rick goes alone, he might as well just be signing his own death warrant. So, he goes, but Shane, Glenn, Maggie, and T-Dog accompany him, because they also have to get formula for baby Judith. Now... With all that said and out of the way, we have come across quite a bit of changes. How will Daryl encountering Merle and the Woodbury people first actually play into the regards of the story? Who are Sophia and Negan going to be ending up saving since this is so early into the introduction of Negan and the Saviors? And will this particular saving be different because of Sophia's influence? And what about the governor and his influence with so many changes? Threw a lot at you guys, but that's where we're going to be leaving things for the moment. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode and are enjoying What If Sophia Joined Negan as a whole. Episode's a bit shorter, like by a few minutes or something, than my usual like over 10 minute length. But for what had to be told in the story today, it's what I got. <laughs> But I hope you guys enjoyed nonetheless, and I'll see you guys next time.